In this video, I'm gonna take a Japanese leather knife that needs a reasonable amount of work and bring it into service. G'day, welcome to Chestnut Nag. My name's Stuart Chignall. I was about to do a video on how to make a uh, chisel roll to store chisels in. Uh, but <laughs> like often happens on this channel, I go to do the thing and I find that there's other steps to the process. In this case, it's I need to get the leather knife ready to use to cut the leather. So this video is about the leather knife. The next video will be about the chisel wrap. Now I've been selling these leather Japanese leather knives for a while. They're also used for shoji screens for cutting the paper and stuff. And when I went to sell this one, I realized it was broken. You can see there's a slight chip out of one of the corners. It's one of those things that doesn't really matter because often you want to put a, you want to grind a camber onto the knife anyway. So the fact that the corner's missing, well, I'm just gonna grind it out, but it does mean I couldn't sell it, so say la vie. And this is often the case when you're dealing with uh, tools, selling tools, especially secondhand tools, is that you get to keep the rejects. Um, but that means you get to lovingly restore them. So what I need to do first for this is I need to grind out that chip and put a, uh, and put a camber on the blade. Uh, you often see these in Japan in all sorts of shapes. Uh, straight edge, straight across, a, a full half moon camber, or possibly even a quarter moon camber. I'm gonna try a quarter moon camber for that to see how having a point on one side and the curve on the other gives us, gives us some flexibility. I might put a handle on it. I haven't decided yet, you know, because you know, that's a pretty convenient shape just as it is. And again, in Japan, you see them both with handles and without, but to grind. Now, because we're in lockdown, I don't have access to the linishes and the machinery grinding stuff that I normally would have. So I'm gonna have to do this naturally with a really, to get the first grind in to do it with, you know, with a really, really coarse sharpening stone. Problem is the really coarse sharpening stone I've got isn't ready for use. Um, it's still just, a rock. So I'm going to have to do a video on making a natural sharpening stone. So just bear with me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, if you want to see the video on making your own natural sharpening stones, uh, links up there somewhere. Back to step minus one of making a leather chisel roll sharpening knife. Now this is an incredibly um, coarse, uh, incredibly soft stone. And doing this, I'm gonna have to resurface it because I'm basically just gonna be grinding the edge. And because it's such a soft stone, uh, yeah, this all this isn't good for the stone. But I made the stone myself, I can resurface it myself, it's no big deal. I don't want much of a camber, I just want to, oh. What is it, Lucky? You want to kiss? You want to kiss? Hmm? You want to kiss? Don't lick my glasses. Go away. Oh. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't want much of a camber on it. I just want to take that corner off. That didn't take long at all. I probably want to put more of a camber on it though. So I think I might keep going for a bit. I'll be right back. So as I was um, flattening this, I was noticing that the 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 back of uh, of the knife was only polishing in the center, which showed that there was a camber. Since it seemed pretty even, I didn't think it was a manufacturing defect. So what I did was that by by rocking it backwards and forwards as I was going on the stone, I polished. Well, well I can see what you can see there. It's not. It's not a great polish, but it's it's getting it's it's uh, there's good coverage, shall we say? It's not very even. Still working on that. But then I realised that there was a back bevel from the manufacturing process, and I was I was sure enough of myself that that wasn't meant to be there because it wasn't even. So I thought, okay, well, I, I better grind the bevel back a little bit more. So I'll go back to the rough sharpening stone, and then. As I kept on sharpening and sharpening and sharpening and sharp, well, not really sharpening, grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding on the rough stone, this is what happened. Almost perfect camber to the blade. And that camber is there because of the camber of the whole body of the blade. You can't really see it, but it's there. 
And as I've ground the bevel, I've ended up with this beautifully even cambered edge. And it's one of the things I love about learning is just discovering stuff like this. But it also goes to show that whenever you're working with a tool that you're not really, really familiar with, you shouldn't assume that you know better than the person who made it. Uh, and I've seen people stuff this up. Like there was once I, I saw a video on YouTube of a blacksmith where he took a Germanic broad axe, which had a similar thing. It had a, it, the, 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 the back wasn't flat, it was cambered. And he thought that that was a bad thing. So he sent about reforging the bloody thing so it became flat, which of course, for anyone who knows anything about hewing, you would know that that means it's nigh on useless for its original purpose. So he thought he knew what he was doing and he was just completely ignorant. <sighs> C'est la vie. You know, it was a 200, 300 year old Germanic broad axe and pretty much ruined. But it reinforced a lesson that I'd already learned is that whenever I get a tool in my hands, before I go about restoring it or bring it back into service or whatever, is I try and take the time to learn what I can from the marks of use and wear and sharpening and maintenance that I can because I'm going to assume that whoever was using a really old tool, like the kind of tools that I get and collect, they were more of a professional than I am so they knew what they were doing more than me. Now, a lot of the time, it turns out that I learned something. Sometimes it turns out, no, the guy was a numpty and yeah, didn't know how to look after his tools. Um, so yeah, but anyway, I'm going to go back to, uh, working this on the, on the Kingstones to deal with the back. I will be back to you when it comes down for the final sharpen. I just had to come back and show you this. Look at that beautiful. That is just the Kingstone, the 800 grit, but look at the lamination there. That is just gorgeous. Anyway, onward. Now, if you've watched any of my uh, videos on sharpening before, you'll know that I don't put, don't put much stock in the, the arm hair shaving test. The real test, if we're gonna do a shave test, about how sharp a blade is, is your face. Yeah, you can see that I've still got my beard. And uh, if you wanna see the video of how Sarah attacked me, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. And when uh, it comes out, you will you won't miss it. Mm. It was an experience, shall we say, and I involving some blood. Oh, and I almost forgot. I'm currently organizing a group buy of a whole stack of chisels from a smith in Japan. If you've been thinking about buying yourself a set, here's a chance to get some incredibly good chisels at a discount, and the discounts will get bigger the more people who join the group buy. If you want more information on that, the links are in the description below, and if you've got any questions, just sing out and I'll answer them in the comments. Catch you later, bye-bye.